Next, we will discuss informed or heuristic based search algorithms. Heuristic functions are a common form in which we can impart additional knowledge to the search algorithm. So if you remember uninformed search strategies were like when somebody is flying an airplane and if the engine was lost then um, you had to look for almost everywhere. That's what DFS, BFS and uh, UCS do. In case of informed search strategies we want to inform the search algorithm to do lesser search so that the search can be faster and more effective. And we do this with the help of heuristic functions. Now, once again, all search algorithms, as I mentioned earlier, differ only in the way they select the next node for expansion. In case of informed search strategies, the node selector for expansion is based on evaluation function Fn. And uh, this evaluation function is construed as a cost estimate. So this gives you the estimate about the or the idea of um, how far you are from the goal and the node with the lowest evaluation is expanded first so overall the implementation is um, identical to that of uniform cost search using priority queue instead the only difference is that we use the function f instead of g so it is still a priority queue but the values in the priority queue while earlier in case of uniform cost search we had lowest path cost, here we have a cost estimate F. And this choice of F determines the search strategy within informed search algorithms. Now um, all the best first search algorithms, which we will discuss one of them later, include as a component of F, that is this function, a heuristic function, usually represented using HN. And uh, this heuristic function HN or which helps you calculate the cost estimate is the estimated cost of the cheapest path from the state at node N to a goal state. So it is a cost of estimated cost of from any node to your goal state G. Usually we can consider this heuristic function HN to be arbitrary. It can be anything. It can be usually it's usually non-negative. And it's a problem specific function so it doesn't necessarily have to range between 0 and 1 for all problems. However, one constraint is that the heuristic function should resolve to 0 when goal node is supplied as input. So if n is a goal node then the heuristic function will sum to 0. We will look at examples of heuristic function. Now let's discuss the first kind of informed search algorithm that is the greedy best first search algorithm. The greedy best first search tries to expand the node that is closest to the goal, assuming that this is going to likely lead to a solution quickly. So then the question is what do we mean by a node that is closest to the goal? So this is given to given by the heuristic function HN. So for the problem of um, uh, Romania, the Romania root finding problem. Here's an example of a heuristic function. Our heuristic function can be something known as a straight line distance or a straight line distance heuristic. Usually represented using HSLT. SLT stands for straight line distance. Since the goal is Bucharest, we need to know the straight line distances to Bucharest. In other words, what we want to look at is, let's say here's our city of Arad and here's Bucharest. There is a road that takes you from Arad to Sibiu, say for example with a cost of 140. Let's assume that this is miles and from Sibiu to 99, um, Sibiu to Fargas and from Fargas to Bucharest. Assuming that this is the actual 2D positions in the 2D map of the, uh, of the, of the Earth, 2D map. Looking at the map, we can directly compute the physical uh, distance between the city of Arad and Bucharest. Similarly, I can compute the distance between Sibiu and Bucharest, Faragas and Bucharest, C and Bucharest and so on. So without knowing any road distances, irrespective of the mountains, the weather and so on, I can compute the physical distance looking at the map between various cities and my goal city. Such a 
heuristic or such a distance is your HSLT. It turns out that for this particular problem, if we calculate these distances, this is the kind of table that we can get. So the distance between Bucharest and itself, your goal node, is zero. Your distance between Arad and Bucharest is 366. Your distance between Vasui and uh, Bucharest is 199 and so on. So this is straight line distances to Bucharest. It is important to note that the values of HSLD cannot be computed from the problem description it's itself. So this problem does not tell you these straight line distances. It takes a certain amount of experience to know that this table can be correlated with this problem. And therefore, it is a useful heuristic. In other words, you need some sort of domain knowledge or expertise to say that this is the problem I have. If I add this heuristic to my problem description, if I add this to the problem description, then I'm going to get faster results using techniques like GFS. So that's why things like these are known as heuristic. So let's look at the distance between the uniform cost search algorithm and greedy based for search algorithm. Say for example, given node A that has child nodes B, C and D, given node A that has child nodes B, C and D with associate costs of 10, 5 and 7. After expanding C, let's say we see that we have nodes E, F and G with um, costs of 40, 50 and 60. This is the cost of going from node um, C to E, C to F and C to G. Which nodes will be chosen by UCS and greedy based for search? So let's look at the difference. In case of uniform cost search, once we start from node A, the nodes that will be put into priority queue are B10, C5 and 7D. Obviously, since C5 in the priority queue has the lowest distance, this will be expanded. That means we put E45 into the priority queue, F55 because 50 plus 5 is 55, and G65 into the priority queue. So then now in the priority queue we have B10, D7 and all of these. That means in the next node, we will expand D7. That is, we will look for the possible options or possible paths that we can take from D7. With greedy based for search, say we start at node A, then the possible paths we have are B, C and D. But then which node we choose depends on not this path cost, but the heuristic function h of n. So whatever the heuristic value of this node b is and c is and d is, that will determine whether c will be expanded first or not. Say if the heuristic value of b was 2, c was 5 and d was 7, then the node b would be expanded first if we were applying greedy based for search. An important intuition that we need to think about when comparing UCS and GBF, GBS is that say this is our starting point and this is our goal node. It is very interesting that uniform cost search checks how far are you going from the goal. That is how far from, sorry, a starting node, starting node. Because the further you go from the starting node, the path cost is going to increase and so on. In other words, uniform cost search will try to keep you closer to the starting node. Closer to the starting node. Whereas greedy based for search, because your heuristic function checks how far you are from the goal state, it sort of constantly checks how far are you from the goal node from goal node. In other words, it will sort of try to keep your exploring um, algorithm closer to the goal state. That is the key intuitive difference between UCS and GBS. While GBS tries to keep you closer to the starting node, 
while while UCS tries to keep you closer to the starting node, GBS tries to keep you closer to the um, to the goal node. It would be ideal to combine these two complementary techniques and come up with an algorithm that's a combination of UCS and uh, um, GBS. And that is exactly what A star algorithm does that we will see next. The A star search algorithm is the most widely known form of the best for search algorithm in among the informed search algorithm. It evaluates nodes by combining GN, that is the cost to reach the node, HN, the cost to get from the node to the goal. So this is what is usually implemented in the uniform cost search and this is in the greedy best for search. So basically the node that we pull out next to from the frontier to process is the combination of your path cost function and your heuristic function hn. Since gn this function gives the path cost from the start node to any node n in the middle so this is what gn gives you the cost of going from starting node to any node in the middle and hn is the estimated cost of the cheapest tram path from n node to the goal so from gn from, from this node n what hn gives you is the cost of going from this node to the goal node so combining these two fn gives you the estimated cost of cheapest solution through n what is the best solution through this node n overall the algorithm is pretty identical to the uniform cost search algorithm except that a star uses this g plus h function instead of just using g let us see how the a star search algorithm works with an example given the following map with the romania problem with path cost shown in the map and a table given with the heuristic function this is your hn table we would like to see the stages of the a star search algorithm so we start with the city of arad our starting node and uh, the possible actions we can take are going to z s and t so we'll add these three cities into our priority queue s t and z now the values in the priority queue will depend on hn plus gn so that means the priority for timisora will be 118 plus hn of timisora so timisora has hn of 329 118 plus 329 similarly the gn for cbu is 140 so the total priority or the total cost will be hn for cbu is um, 253 so it will be 140 plus 253 similarly for gerind it will be 75 plus 374 so this gives us these three possible nodes in the priority queue and out of these, since CBU has the minimum distance, minimum cost, 393 compared to two others, that is the next node that we will expand. So after expanding CBU, the nodes that we have are the city of Oradia, O, another city, Faragas, and this city, R. Now the costs associated with these cities are the cost from CBU to Faragas is 140 plus 99, 140 plus 99 plus the cost of going from Faragas to Bucharest. So Faragas to Bucharest is uh, 176 plus 176. Similarly for Oradia, it will be 75 plus 71, 75 plus 71 plus 380. And for this city R, the cost will be 140 plus 180, sorry, only 80 plus 193. So now what we have in the priority queue is these two cities along with these three cities. And whichever has the minimum cost out of all these cities is expanded. Here's a full solution that shows that from Sibiu, you can actually go back to Arad as well and then compute the paths. That is, uh, after going to Sibiu, you can go back to Arad with the cost of going here and then going back and then uh, checking that. Usually, that will not give you better solutions. So, um, 
Here's the cost of going to Fargus, Oradia, and R. And we see that the private queue now has 415F, 671O, 413R, and 447T, and 449G. So out of these, since R has the minimum path cost, next we expand um, R. Now then we have next subsequent uh, nodes. So after expanding R, what we have is um, these additional nodes. And um, we see that Faragus has the minimum um, total cost. So it will expand Faragus. And we have um, Bucharest at a cost of 450. It will next expand the next node P. And um, then we get to Bucharest again with even a lower path cost. That is, um, with uh, at first it goes through this path. The total cost is um, 450. Then it tries the next path. And that gives us um, 418. So this is how the A-star sort algorithm works. So heuristic functions are extremely powerful. Your immediate question may be, for a given problem, how do I know what heuristic function to use? And the answer is, there is no formula. The only way to learn about heuristic functions is to look at examples and use them as intuitions to build your own heuristic functions. So let's look at another example of the heuristic function for the eight puzzle game. The average cost for a randomly generated 8 puzzle instance is about 22 steps. In other words, you start from the first step, make random changes, make random changes again, make random changes again. So only after approximately around 22 steps will we find the actual solution. And the branching factor is about 3. It's about 3 because if you are here, you, can, you have 4 choices to make. If you are here, you only have 3 choices to make. Uh, only two choices to make. So it, uh, on average, the branching factor is about three only. This means that an exhaustive tree search algorithm to def 22 would look at about three to the power 22 number of states. Given that there's only a fixed kinds of moves that we can do, this will reduce to around um, 181,000 distinct states which is still very large. Now, if we had the puzzle of a bigger size, say 15 um, piece puzzle, then this number would roughly be a very, very large value. So we need a heuristic function that never overestimates the number of steps to the goal state. For the eight puzzle game, here are two commonly used heuristics. The first one known as H1, is the number of misplaced tiles. That is, what we look at is how many tiles are misplaced compared to the goal state. So here, if this is our starting state, and if this is our goal state, the number of misplaced tiles, let's count them. So let's look at the first corner, seven. Is seven at the correct position? No, so one misplaced tile. Is 2 at the correct position? Another misplaced style. Is 4 at the correct position? No, another misplaced style. 5? No. Blank? No. 6? No. 8? It's also not in the correct position. 3? Not. 1? Not. So none of them are in the correct. So the, the total cost is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. In other words, this node has, this state has a cost of 9, which is uh, the worst possible cost. Since all of the 8 tiles are out of position, um, we, we could say it's only 8 because we can ignore the blank. And H1 is admissible heuristic because it is clear that any tile out of place must be moved at least once. So um, H1 for this state is um, not 9, but effectively um, 8 only ignoring the blank space. Next heuristic is H2. This is, the H2 heuristic is also known as the city block distance or Manhattan distance. Here we look at the sum of the distances of the tiles from their goal positions. So what we look at is how far each tile is from where it should be. So if we look at this number seven, how far it is, is it should be here, but it's there. So uh, the distance is 1, 2, and 3. Distance is 3 for 7 plus 
let's look at the second two the this block two should be over here so it's one step far away plus this block four should be one two blocks away two this is what you see here so in this way if you sum up the distances for each node what you get is your h2 heuristic so obviously higher the distance the worse your state is uh, the lower the distance the better your state is the distance we count is the sum of the horizontal and vertical distances because we cannot move along the diagonals and also s2 is an admissible heuristic because um because any move um, can do is um, because all any move a single move can do is move one tile one step closer to the goal by taking the actions of going left right um, up and down in summary in this chapter what we saw is a problem has five parts a problem should be defined using five parts initial state set of actions possible transition model a goal test function and a path cost function there are three kinds of uninformed search algorithms we discussed BFS which expands the shallowest node first UCS expands the node with the lowest path cost given by GN DFS expands the node with um, uh, the the deepest the node first informed search methods may have access to a heuristic function HN that estimates the cost of a solution from N GFS expands the node with the minimum heuristic value and A star shows the most powerful one expands the node with minimum path cost and minimum heuristic uh, value. The performance of a heuristic source algorithm depends on the quality of the heuristic function. The better heuristic function you have, the faster your algorithm is going to converge to optimal solution.